You are not alone on your journey. Listen in to the Unshakable Living Show, Supernaturally and Divinely Unshakable with Lisa Belts, twice a month for your well-deserved dose of positive energy and your personal reminder that you are perfectly imperfect, and that's okay. Find your true calling and influence the world around you for the better with your profound gifts. Walk away feeling truly unshakable. Remember, God can't steer a parked car, so step on the gas now with Lisa and let him do the rest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Unshakable Living Show with Coach Lisa. And just like I talked about in my intro, it is time to get into action. And today we're going to talk about getting into action in the realm of abundance. And so abundance is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about. We are so often living in lack and scarcity. You know, it's the old more month than money. I never have enough time. How many times a day do we catch ourselves thinking, if not saying something about not having enough? We all do it until you start training yourself out of it. And so a lot of times we just accept that, oh, that's just the way it is. It's just life. You know, there's never enough hours in my day. There's never enough money in my bank account at the end of the month. And we're just resigned to it. But I'm going to ask the question, is that really true? And is it true for everybody? Because if it's not true for everybody, it means that there's hope for the rest of us to be able to change and move into a different model. And so I see a lot of people in my world that have enough. They have enough time. They have enough energy. They have enough money or provision to do the things that they're called to do, to make the impact and to have the influence in the world that they're meant to have. So we're going to look a little bit tonight at what's different for them. But first, I want to define what abundance is, at least from my perspective. So abundance is more than money, but it's typically dollars that we think about first. We can have scarcity or lack in any area of life. Um, We can have scarcity or lack in our health, in our relationships, water to drink, clean water, wages, air to breathe, time, ideas, innovation, you name it and you get the picture. But abundance is having all we need and having enough left over to bless others. Abundance simply means having more than enough of everything you need all of the time. How wonderful would that be if that was our norm rather than that being the exception that we dream about and live into. And so another definition of abundance is great, plenty, an overflowing quantity, ample sufficiency, in strictness applicable to quantity only, but customarily used of numbers, as in an abundance of pheasants. In scripture, The abundance of the rich is great wealth, and that's Ecclesiastes 5 and Mark 7. Scripture also talks about the abundance of the sea is great plenty of fish. It also denotes fullness, overflowing as the abundance of the heart. I got to see my four-month-old granddaughter today, and I tell you, you love your kids, but when you have grandchildren, there is this abundance and overflow of love for your grandkids. It is just indescribable until you're there. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about spiritual laws and how those spiritual laws affect our mindset and our outlook on scarcity or lack and on abundance. When we talk about mindset, so mindset is how we think and believe about things. And so in, in a prior show, we kind of talked about that, you know, thoughts drive beliefs, beliefs drive actions, and actions drive results. So we're going to come back to that 
first thing about thoughts. So thoughts and beliefs, what we think and what we believe determine the outcome. And so I want you to think for just a minute about the fact that God, and it's whatever you define God to be, universe, source, for me, it is, you know, the, the, the God of the Bible, Yahweh, but God is infinite. Source is infinite. The universe is infinite and, and limitless. There is no lack and no scarcity when we think about provision and abundance in the universe. God's ability and his desire to bless us is also overflowing and it's written again and again and again in scripture so for anyone that does not have a, a christian belief system again look at the world around you there is typically always enough sunshine there's always enough air to breathe you know you may have to do some cleansing of water but the water is there there is an abundance of the things that we need for daily living so another spiritual principle that is part of abundance is the law of giving and receiving. And so we have that phrase that it's better to give than receive, but there's kind of a catch in that. And so, yes, it is a good principle that we are giving, whether you're, you're in a church and you're tithing or you are supporting nonprofits, there needs to be some giving to kind of cause that abundance cycle to flow. But I have found in my own life, I was not good at receiving. And until you receive something in, you don't have it in abundance to give back out. And so God's really been talking to me about allow and accept. And so what that means is we have to allow in God's provision. And a lot of times we kind of play the martyr and kind of go, you know, no, no, God, it's okay. I'll just sit here and suffer because I know it's the right thing to do. And that is really not in alignment with how God wants us to function and live in the world. He designed us, divinely designed us for abundance and to flow. And so scarcity, you think about a creek, a, a creek, a river, however you pronounce it. When there is flow, it's constantly moving. But when there is an obstacle, you know, a beaver dam or a human-made dam, it backs things up and it restricts the flow. So often, I am my own biggest obstacle that is preventing the flow. So by saying, God, I allow in the provision, I allow in all of the blessings not just money, but a lot of other things. I allow in those blessings. And not only do I allow them in, I accept them. So just letting somebody in my front door allows them in. But like when I reach out and hug that person, that's when I have accepted them into my home. And so we not only want to allow, but we want to accept and receive those blessings. And so once that happens, we fill our cup up and then we give from our overflow. And again, there's scripture after scripture that talks about not giving of your lack, but giving of your abundance. So we'll come back to that a little bit later too. And so another kind of spiritual law is even when you are strapped for something, if you're, if you're tight on money give a nickel. Literally, it is not the dollar amount that makes the difference. It is the act of giving and it is the amount of compassion. And again, the mindset and the thought in your heart, it's that intention in giving. So if you drive through Starbucks, if you drive through coffee, buy coffee for the person behind you, if you can, that's giving that will enhance your abundance. Um, if you don't truly don't have the money to give, can you give a good or a service? Can you go clean somebody's house for them? Can you donate clothes, gently used clothes to someone that is in need? 
find someone else's need and meet it. And I'm reminded of a time, you know, at this point, 25 years ago, when we were at a point of tremendous need, we had gone, we had lost a business. Uh, we were in the process of having to sell our house um, and some other things. And, you know, God told me at that point, pray for others. When you pray for others, it allows God to appoint other people to pray for you. And when you are in need of prayer, you're pretty restricted to how you're looking at things. By allowing someone else to pray for you, God can speak into them and it's going to open up the doors for that prayer to flow. So regardless of where you're at today, again, we're talking about taking action today. Take action literally today yet. Find something to do that is good for someone else. And so I want to also touch on the topic that money is a tool. We don't collect money for money's sake. We collect money for the things it can do to help us have influence and impact, either for the kingdom of God or philanthropically to bless others, to help others in need. And so money is an energetic exchange of value. I provide coaching to you, you pay me. It's an exchange. And that money is, you can think of it as thank you notes. So any of you that are in business, when someone pays you, they're saying thank you for providing your good or service. Money is also one of those two or three topics that people generally have pretty strong opinions about. If you were raised in an environment of lack, you likely believe that money is hard to come by. We're going to dig deeper into that, but being aware of your um, mindset, being aware of your sense of lack is the starting point. Again, we're going to go back to that thought and that belief. And so God wants to release heaven's abundance and his resources on earth to those who have the character to do good with money. So if you are a positive person, you're going to use money positively. And so many of us are afraid to accept and receive money and those kinds of things because we're afraid it's going to do something bad. It's not. So we're going to go ahead and go to break. And when we come back, we're going to pick up talking about heaven's resources and how God wants us to use those things. Join us in just a minute. And welcome back. We are talking about abundance and we're talking about God's desire to release heaven's resources. So if we think about heaven, you don't think about there being lack in heaven. And it's true. There is no lack in heaven because God is limitless. And so I really want to get into the concept. Um, I, I Growing up, I always heard about the scripture that said that money is the root or love of money is the root of all evil. And a lot of times people shorten it just to say money is the root of all evil. And I'm actually going to tell you that that is not biblical or scriptural. So when God talks about the love of money being the root of all evil, it is people that are after money just for money's sake. And so one of the things we talk about is that money or even abundance provision amplifies your character. And this is kind of what I was touching on right before the break. When you are a positive person, when you have a good character, when you genuinely have compassion and care about other people, money is a tool that allows you to do greater good. And all of us have a purpose and a plan and a calling. And I really want to be clear that there is no more important or less important purpose and calling. When you are in the center of God's plan for your life, when you're walking that out and doing what you're doing, whether it's being a stay-at-home mom raising kids 
or you're a CEO running a Fortune 50 company or a missionary or in ministry, whatever it is, when you're right where you're supposed to be, God's provision is also there for everything that you need. So if you are running a global corporation, or let's even say a global ministry or a global um, um, nonprofit, you need more funds and more provision to go do the things that you're called to do. And so again, money amplifies good character. Money gives us influence and helps us make an impact in the world. And in our society today, we see so much division. We see so many people that are struggling and there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of scarcity mindsets. With greater wealth, with greater provision, with greater abundance, you can go and change your world. And I talk a lot about our sphere of influence. And so your sphere of influence, think of it as the concentric rings, like when you drop a pebble in the water and it makes rings. Your immediate sphere of influence are the people that you're in contact with daily. And then you may have a business and your customers and, and your rings go out. So each of us has a sphere of influence. The greater your calling is, the greater your sphere of influence and the more provision you need to make the impact you're supposed to make. And so it's right and appropriate for us to ask for more provision as long as we're doing it with that reason of being not only caring for my needs, but then going out and caring for others. You know, you think about Mother Teresa, you think about um, uh, ministries or organizations, um, Oh, uh, Compassion International, uh, the ones that, that go into even the Red Cross, organizations that go into um, areas of great need, whether that's from a hurricane, a flood, an earthquake, you know, natural disasters, those kinds of things, they it takes money for them to do what they're called to do. And I believe we're entering a season where we're going to see a shift in the provision out of the hands of those who are not using it for good into the hands of those of us who want to go do good in the world. And as you are called to walk out, whether it's in your home, your neighborhood, your church, city, state, or broader, the provision is already there. And God was talking to me about this yesterday. Another concept that we run into when we talk about abundance is people going, well, I don't wanna take more than my fair share because I don't want to shortchange someone else. And that's a really great sentiment, but in God's economy, that can never happen. Because when, before we were born, God wrote out our book of days. And your book of days basically says, here's all the things that you're going to accomplish on the earth. And here's all of the opportunities you're going to have. And all of those things that were divinely designed that you are intended to go and do, God has already set aside provision for you to go do those things. So when you ask for and then allow and accept in God's provision that already has your name on it, you are not taking from someone else because God has all the provision that they need as well. So you think about getting your slice of the pie, you know, that's kind of one of the phrases that we hear. In our society today, people are so afraid that they're not going to get their slice of the pie, that, that they're not very kind. And so one of the things I really have on my heart to do is to start a kindness movement. To start that kindness movement, again, it's going to take influence and impact and resources. And God's still giving me the outline of what that's going to look like, but it is truly going to be compassion oriented. It is going to be helping people that genuinely need help and deserve help and trying to start shifting people out of the scarcity and lack and fear mindset more into being open to 
and allowing in God's provision that already has their name on it. And so another key element that we need to think about when we talk about abundance is that we get more of what we focus on. If you spend your time and energy worrying about not being able to pay your bills, you're probably not going to be able to pay your bills. The more you focus, the more worry you generate, the more fear and anxiety you generate, the more lack and scarcity you're going to get. Again, I'm going to go back and say it's thoughts, beliefs, actions, results, and that can be both positive and negative. So when you instead say, I am not out of debt yet, but I am making progress every month. And you make statements like, I will always have enough to get me through. God is my source and my provision. He is bringing me everything I need. And you start moving into gratitude and thankfulness. It shifts the tide. It turns the tide. And I can't say that it's going to happen overnight. Your shift can begin to happen overnight. And then it snowballs and it gets greater and greater and greater. And so another key thing right there to think about is that we want to control the how and the when. And so when I have a new idea and I say, you know, God, is this something you've given me? Is this a God idea? And he says, yes, I want to go, okay, well, let's do it this way and this way and this way. And I'd like to do it next year, or I'd like to do it in the next 30 days. We oftentimes try and control things. And the truth is, is we can't. Control does not exist. Those things that are going to happen are going to happen. Again, it is us coming into alignment with what God has already planned. And it is us coming into agreement and moving forward at our pace. We have to do our part. We have to um, take action to get the results but we're not forcing it, we're flowing with it. And this has been a super hard lesson for me to learn. I'm a project manager by trade. And so I wanna lay out milestones and I wanna break it down into tasks and I wanna do, 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 do. And it has really been an education for me to learn to flow and to, again, allow things to come at the right time. So my bigger responsibility is staying in alignment and listening and moving when I feel that nudge and I know that it is time and I know I'm supposed to go do something. And so as we go through life, there are different seasons of life. And when you have small children at home, that's a season. When you have junior high and high school, that's a season. When you're an empty nester, that's a season. And in each of those seasons, you may have different callings that take different sources or, or different provision. And so you kind of have to step back a little bit and think about where you're at and what is your call and what is your, what is your provision that you need today. And again, I talk a lot about money as, as um, abundance, but it is also health and relationships. It is spiritual health. It is mental health. You know, we talk a lot about self-care. Sometimes having five minutes to yourself when you've got toddlers is a flat out miracle. And so again, you get creative and you ask God to bring you the opportunity to show you how to carve out five or 10 minutes of quiet time. And I promise you, when you start allowing in that creativity and allowing in God's provision, those five or 10 minutes of quiet time will happen. Um, another thing I want to talk about is that our stability and our safety does not come from the accumulation of wealth. Your confidence comes from being who you are divinely designed to be and moving through life with your creator. Um, again, for those of you that, that think of universe or source, your safety is in moving, moving into the areas that you get those nudges and that you're called to do. So I want to contrast for just a second. When we live in scarcity and lack, we oftentimes are in fear. 
when we're in fear, we're trying to make sure that we get what we need and we move out of compassion. And that is a really low vibe place to be. When you're in fear and anxiety, you typically don't have a lot of hope or joy. Hope and joy are a much higher vibrational emotion than scarcity and lack. When we're in scarcity and lack is when we get physically ill. You know, you, you overeat, you emotional eat, you don't take care of yourself, you don't exercise. Again, this stuff is all intertwined, but it all goes back to gratitude and allowing in and accepting the provision and not giving in to fear. So we're always going to have fear. Courage is doing things even when you're afraid. And so it may feel really weird. It may feel out of your comfort zone to step out into this abundance area. It can take a little bit of courage the first time to say, I love money and money loves me. It still feels a little weird for me to say that, but I'm learning more and more to energetically align with that. And it's, I love money and lo money loves me in order that I can go do the things I'm called to do and have a, a bigger impact and a bigger influence that I'm called to be and do in the world. And focusing on lack makes us miserable and it takes away our joy. And again, we talked before about money being a tool. We don't want money. We want the things that money brings. We want the freedom. We want the opportunities, the stability, the safety, the security, being able to put your kids in school. So it's really not the accumulation of wealth, the accumulation of things that we're looking for. We ultimately want health and joy and hope and good relationships, and the ability to go do good in the world. Each of us is intrinsically born with gifts and capabilities, and true life and true heart satisfaction comes when we are moving in our gifts, when we are using who we are, that being of yourself, to go and make the world a better place. That's ultimately what money gives us the ability to do. And so again, contrast lack, scarcity, and fear to hope, joy, and abundance. I'm going to choose abundance pretty much every single time. One, it makes me feel better. It keeps me healthier. It keeps me mentally healthier. And it allows me to be in that space of gratitude, which really keeps me spiritually aligned. And so... Um, I remember hearing about families during the depression. So we all go through hard times, right? That's just part of life. But in the depression, when people were going through really hard times, the families that were consistently giving and giving back and blessing others, even in that time of lack, those families never went without. And if you go back and read journals or go back and read newspaper articles from the 40s, you'll find example after example after example of people who tithed, people who gave to others, people who invited a family that didn't have food in to have dinner with them. It's that perpetuation of abundance. And it is a spiritual law. It's the, the, the law of giving and receiving. And so um, I also want to talk just a little bit tonight about the concept of covenant. And I know we're, we're getting short on time. Um, covenant is an agreement between two people. And so covenant is unbreakable. And so when God made an agreement with Abraham in the Old Testament of the Bible, God promised Abraham health, wealth, relationships, and salvation. And so Abraham was one of the wealthiest people in the Old Testament. And God's covenant with Abraham extends to us today. And those promises, those four promises of health, wealth, relationship, and um, salvation extend to us. And so God's promises, you can hold God to his promises. As you move into abundance... 
I really want you to think about where your beliefs lie in abundance and how you can begin to shift those things. So your book of life is filled with abundance, provision, insight, hope, joy, and salvation. If you're curious and you want to know more about this, contact me at coachlisa at lisabelts.com. And so it's C-O-A-C-H-L-Y-S-A at L-Y-S-A-B-E-L-T-Z dot com. I'd love to just have a short conversation with you and talk about how we can move you and how we can shift your thoughts and your beliefs around abundance. So we're going to close tonight with an affirmation. And you can write this down and I encourage you to say it two or three times a day. I am a magnet for miracles. Miracles come to me daily from sources known and unknown, expected and unexpected. I'm going to say it again. I am a magnet for miracles. Miracles come to me daily from sources known and unknown, expected and unexpected. Repeat this three times a day, every day, until you see change happening for you and you feel it starting to shift and move inside of you. So that's our show for tonight. Reach out to me if you have questions and thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to The Unshakable Living Show, supernaturally and divinely unshakable with Lisa Belt. Tune in twice a month for your well-deserved dose of positive energy and your personal reminder that you are perfectly imperfect and that's okay. Find your true calling and influence the world around you for the better with your profound gifts. Walk away feeling truly unshakable. Remember, God can't steer a parked car, so step on the gas now with Lisa and let him do the rest.